Hello and welcome. My name is AJ O'Neill. I'm a software engineer. And I make six figures a year typing on a keyboard. I'm absolutely convinced that you could do the same and I'm here to teach you how. Today I will be responding to a couple of questions and comments that I got yesterday about why Python specifically you should be learning. So what I'm going to do is give you three reasons that you should absolutely learn Python, as well as four reasons that it's not going to be the most useful language for you. I also want to let you know that what you learn with Python is going to be at least 70% transferable to the next language that you learn. And you're going to need to learn at least three languages if you're going to hit that 100K mark anytime soon. Now, to give you some perspective, there are only 33 words in the Python language. In Go, there are only 25, and the most complex language, which you are absolutely going to need to learn, which is JavaScript, there are only 62 and half of them aren't even used. Because this is something new to you, you don't know the things that you don't know you don't know. So the first reason to learn Python is this book, Learn Python the Hard Way, specifically this book. It has materials that are laid out in a very clear and logical fashion that's easy to follow. Why not use an online course? For some of you, that might work even better. But in an online course, you can kind of jump around, you can get ahead, you can kind of shoot yourself in the foot and become discouraged and interrupt your own learning process. This book is step-by-step step and that's why I recommend it. Now, of the people that I know who have used this book to learn programming, none of them are using Python at their day job, but that doesn't matter. What matters is that it is an excellent resource to get you started. I'm not suggesting that you invest a year into learning Python. I'm suggesting that you learn to program through Python. Now, this same book is actually available in a couple of different flavors. There's also Ruby, C, there coming out with a new one for JavaScript. So why, when there's other options available, would I pick Python? That brings us to number two, indentation. Indentation is how you visually organize and structure your code. I guarantee you, indentation is by far the most important concept in computer programming. Some of you are gonna pick it up naturally without any problem. Others of you are going to struggle. If it doesn't just click with you right away, it's fundamental that you learn it and Python forces you to because if you have bad indentation, the program won't even run. If you don't get indentation, all you'll ever be is a code monkey that knows how to copy and paste. The third reason to learn Python first is that it actually is a useful language. It does a lot of things good enough so that you can start to explore on your own and be productive. Its most specific use case is data science. Most of you are not gonna go into that. It's basically taking really, really, really big spreadsheets and crunching numbers with Python libraries like Pandas, Scikit, and FB Profit. So if you wanna learn more about that, that's where you're directly gonna go next. Now with all of that out of the way, before I go into the reasons that I don't think Python is gonna be your most useful language that you learn, I wanna remind you that you're gonna to have to learn three languages, you are not going to get more ahead by learning something different first. The basic principles are gonna apply across the board. And if you can't easily pick up a second language, then you didn't pick up the principles at all in the first place. Now, all programming languages in theory can do all of the same things. Some of them make it more convenient and some of them make it less convenient. But let me tell you the four reasons that I don't think Python is gonna be the most useful language for you. And they're all based around the same thing. Python is old. Not that old is bad. In fact, a lot of times old is good. It generally takes a programming language about 15 years to become adopted across the industry. You don't wanna use a language that's any less than probably about seven to 10 years old. Otherwise, you might be learning a skill that's really not going to be relevant. But there's a lot that's happened since 1990 when Python was created. Here's what's changed in the last 30 years that was pretty evident 15 years ago. So the first reason is the internet. 30 years ago, we didn't know that the internet was gonna be as big as it's become. That's important because 30 years ago, people who were designing languages weren't designing languages with easy built-in networking functionality. And Python suffers from this. Yes, it was added, but no, it doesn't work well. At least not nearly as well as other languages that we have like Go, Node, and Rust. Number two, whereas 30 years ago, only supercomputers had multiple cores, now everything from your phone to your gaming system to your laptop all have multiple cores. Python just doesn't do this well. In fact, it's not that it just doesn't do it well, it's that it's really, really difficult and convoluted. It's almost like programming for multiple cores in C, which is over 50 years old. 
The third reason, 30 years ago, there were a dozen different operating systems. Today, there's really only three. You've got Linux, which is on most computers, including Android phones, DVD players, etc. Then you've got Mac OS, which is on the iPhone and Apple computers. Lastly, you've got Windows, which is predominantly just on desktops and laptops, which are most of the computers that you and I think of as computers when we interact with them from day to day. Whereas most modern languages make it relatively easy to write a program that's going to run on each type of system the same with a couple of hairball exceptions, Python is not good at this. As soon as you get beyond the basic programming into something like networking, managing processes, you're going to find that on each system that you want to run the program on, you have to program it in a different way, and this isn't productive, it's just tedious. Number four is that there are just so many other good options for languages that are modern, that do networking excellently well, Go, Node and Rust come to mind, to have native multi-core support in some shape or form, and that almost everything that you're going to do in them will run on each operating system exactly the same with minimal code changes, if any. So that wraps it up. My three big reasons that I think you should be learning Python, this book and the way that it organizes and structures its curriculum, indentation is an absolute fundamental that you must learn and Python's going to help you with. It's generally useful. You can create programs, whether for yourself or your employer, as well as its specific advantages in machine learning. And the four reasons that I don't think it's gonna be your most useful language, it's not good at networking, take advantage of multiple CPUs. You often have to write different code for different operating systems. And lastly, is that as I said before, there are just so many better choices for being productive today that are going to be easier to become an expert at, that are going to provide you with higher pay and in which there's higher demand generally speaking. Of those languages, my top recommendation would be Go and nearly 100% of the knowledge that you gain in Python is transferable to Go. So as I said before, my number one recommendation, and I can't stress this enough, if you're not a self-directed learner, if you're instruction-directed learner, you need to pick up this book. It is your first step, whether you're going into a boot camp or you're gonna go straight into the job market, you need to pick this up first. I hope that that was helpful. If you wanna hear more and along this vein of how to become a software engineer, go ahead and hit subscribe because that's what I'm gonna be talking about over the next couple of weeks and months. So see you around, adios.